Hello. Welcome to this lecture on the frequency response function of a single degree of freedom system. This lecture is part of the course Dynamics and Control of Mechanical Systems. If you are already familiar with the concept of transfer function and frequency response function, just skip this lecture and go ahead to the lecture for multi-degree of freedom systems. Let us consider the ordinary differential equation of an undamped single degree of freedom mass spring system. That's the equation you see here, mq double dot plus kq is equal to the force. We can integrate this differential equation to obtain the response q, but an, another way, uh, sometimes easier way of finding the response is something you learned in the course Signals and Systems, uh, which is applying the Laplace transform. Applying the Laplace transform means we apply this transformation L on both sides, on the left-hand side and on the right-hand side. Let me refresh your memory about the Laplace transform. The Laplace transform of f of t, for example, is the integral of f of t times e to the power of, of minus st over time. And it's a complex quantity and that's indicated by the hat. And the same holds for q, so the Laplace transform of q of t is q hat of s. And for q double dot, we have this rule that says that the Laplace transform of q double dot is s squared times the Laplace transform of q, so that's s squared times q hat of s. Taking this into account, we find then that the Laplace transform of the ODE is uh, m s squared q hat plus k q hat is equal to f hat. And if we reorganize this, we get m s squared plus k, and this times q hat is equal to f hat. So finally, we find the result that q hat divided by f hat is equal to 1 divided by m s squared plus k. And this expression is the transfer function of this system. And the letter we normally use for the transfer function is g. So this is g of s. Before we go ahead, let's have a short intermezzo to discuss the properties of exponential functions. So this is just to remind you that the exponential of a sum, so e to the power of a plus b, is equal to the product of e to the power of a times e to the power of b, with a and b complex numbers. And the second property is that if we have an exponential function e to the power of jx, with j squared is equal to minus 1, then this function can be written as cosinus x plus j sinus x. So keep this in mind when you look at the slides we have in this lecture. Let's continue. We derived this transfer function tf which is capital G of S, as you see here. And here, S is equal to sigma plus J omega. So it is a complex quantity. In general, uh, this transfer function can describe transient response of a system, uh, steady state response of, of a system, any kind of response. But when we are in a situation where the system is in a steady state, so it has found uh, the, the amplitude of oscillation that uh, will remain the same over time, eh? then we can disregard, disregard sigma 
and just take S is equal to J omega, where omega is the frequency in radians per second. And if we substitute then this S is J omega in the expression of the transfer function, we find H of omega is equal to 1 divided by K minus N omega squared. And this function is the frequency response function of the system. At this point, I need to say that to be consistent with the notation in the book Mechanical Vibrations, we will use capital omega instead of a small omega when we refer to frequency in the frequency response function. So it will look like this with capital omega instead of small omega. This is one way of arriving at the frequency response function. And typically, uh, the transfer function is a quantity that is used in control. You will see that. And the frequency response function is a quantity that is used in vibration analysis. In vibration analysis, normally, we don't derive the transfer function first and then go to the frequency response function but we derive it directly from the ODE. So I will show you that now. Let's go back to the ODE. This is the expression we had before. And now we will directly assume that the system is in a steady state. So we will assume that uh, we have S is equal to J omega. And assuming that, in fact, is taking the Fourier transform of this expression instead of taking the Laplace transform. And we can do that. We can just take the Fourier transform of this expression, or we can do it in, a, in the quick and dirty way to call it like that, which is assuming that the excitation force is a harmonic excitation. So harmonic excitation means that the force has a certain force amplitude, and then it is a cosinus of omega t plus v, where v is the phase angle and capital omega is the frequency. And there is a compact way of expressing this, which is to say that the force is the real part of a complex force amplitude f hat times e to the power of j capital omega t. And this complex amplitude, I express it, express it here, is then the amplitude Fa times e to the power of j phi, where phi is the phase angle. When this is the excitation, then the response Q will as well be a Qa, an amplitude Qa, times cosinus omega t plus capital phi. And this is a different phase angle than this phi here. This can be expressed in compact form as well, and we have it here. So it would be Q of t is the real part of Q hat times e to the power of j capital omega t, and Q hat, Q hat is equal to Qa times e to the power of j phi. Now we can substitute this in the ODE. That is what you see here. And we take the real part. And then, because this equation has to be valid for any time t, then we can eliminate the e to the power of j omega t, and we end up having this relationship that q hat is equal to f hat divided by minus m omega squared plus k. And from here, we define the frequency response function, which is capital H of omega, and that is 1 divided by min, min, minus m omega squared plus k. This is a frequency response function. So what we have done here is go from a representation in time domain to a representation in frequency domain. The question is, how does this function look like? 
if we plot it in a linear scale, it would look like this. So we see a peak that goes to infinity at the eigenfrequency of the system, which is a square root of k divided by m. But outside this peak, we don't see much in this linear scale. So in dynamics, normally we will plot it like this in a logarithmic scale for the i-axis. So x-axis stays the same and in the y-axis we use a logarithmic scale. Then you see we see the curve much better. Again, at the resonance peak, the response goes to infinity. We don't see it go to infinity because we have a um, limited delta f there. Uh, so only if we hit the resonance when we do the calculation in MATLAB, it will go to infinity. And in this course, on part B, as you know, you will uh, start learning about uh, control and in control normally you will plot this like this so that is the log log scale so both the x-axis the frequency and the y-axis the magnitude of the frequency response function are in a logarithmic scale to summarize we are started with the ordinary differential equation of an undamped single degree of freedom system and we tried two di different things. One is to apply Laplace, the Laplace transform to this equation. This is a general situation. We are not making any assumptions regarding the response of the system. And then we obtain the transfer function TF, which is capital G, as you see in the, in the screen, on the screen. And the other possibility is to take the Fourier transform of the differential equation. To do that, we are assuming that the system is in a steady state and the result is the frequency response function, which is denoted with H of omega. The transfer function is normally used in control. And the frequency response function is the representation that, that is normally used in vibration analysis. So in this course, you will be working with both. Thanks for watching. See you next time.